I have the pleasure to be here and interviewing Robert Kibriano, a British Cyprus distinguished photographer who is bringing to Cyprus the exhibition London to Nicosia, Art, Expression and Connection, which opens on April 6 and runs through April 30th. Robert, thank you for being here. Thank you. What is the reason behind this initiative of yours to bring the London to Nicosia Art Expression and Connection exhibition to Cyprus? It's a bit of a long story. <laughs> um, by accident, really. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a British born Cypriot. I happen to have a, a leg in both communities. Uh, I live in England, live in Cyprus, work in England, work in Cyprus. And I'm aware of the connectivity to the extent that there is connectivity between the two Cypriot communities. But it struck me when I was with uh, um, Mihaly Zambelas mm -hmm. uh, and Lugia Zambelas, who own the Zambelas Gallery, uh, that they, being sponsors of Hellenic artists, Cypriots and Greek, I noticed that there was something missing. And what was missing was the fact that the British Cypriot art community wasn't really being represented mm -hmm. um, in their museum or here in, in Cyprus. I have friends and connections with the, the, the British Cypriot art community. And one day, wandering around the Zambella Museum and looking at all the wonderful Hellenic works that uh, he puts on display there, both in permanent exhibition and, and, um, and, and uh, ad hoc exhibitions, I thought, well, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could actually extend the concept of Hellenic Cypriot artists mm -hmm. to include this vibrant community that I was aware of in the UK? So I went back to the UK and I spoke to my very good friend Renos Lavidis, who is well known in the UK as an artist, not just as a Cypriot artist, but as an artist. And I put this idea to him. And he introduced me to his network of, of Cypriot artists. And to my surprise, I learned that they didn't really have opportunities or hadn't really even thought about presenting and displaying and showing what they could do here in Cyprus, their homeland. So with those two thoughts, I went to Mihalis and Lugia Zambelas, and I made the proposition, wouldn't it be nice if we could extend what you're doing here in Cyprus to include the British Cypriot community? And to my pleasure, my, my, my great pleasure, they picked that up immediately. And similarly, when I went back to London and I said to my British Cypriot art uh, colleagues and friends, there is this opportunity, what do you think? They too were inspired by it. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed was, that whereas the individual artists had on an ad hoc basis occasionally made some connection with Cyprus, it had never been formalised. It had never been formalised in a way where, for example, here in Cyprus, the various museum galleries, etc., available, will look out for and promote and present and support uh, the local art community. They'd never thought to include the broader diaspora. And similarly, in Britain, the Cypriot artists there had never thought, yes, they displayed their works, uh, they were educated there um, in their art, they practiced their art there, but they never thought of taking that in an organized mm -hmm. way to Cyprus. So that's how the idea came. And I believe this is now going to be the first attempt at, in a, in a more organized fashion, showing what the British Cypriot art community has been doing, what it can do, what talent that we have here in Cyprus. Cyprus. And, you know, we haven't called it this, but my, my idea is that you know, we're coming home. Mm -hmm. you know, we British Cypriots, we're, you know what Cypriots are like, you know, we're a family. Um, we have lots of connections with the island, um, history, friends, family connections today. Um, and for that, that that particular link not to be so well developed is something I'm trying to close through this uh, exhibition. Can we talk about these artists that we're going to see at the uh, exhibition and can we talk about their artwork as sure. well? Sure. We're showing four artists and the first thing I should say that the, the, the art community, the, the Cypriot art community in the UK is very broad mm -hmm. across many fields. So it would have been impossible in one show to put on display all of the talent and capabilities. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do was obviously to put on a broad spectrum, uh, diverse spectrum, so not similar things, mm -hmm. to show the breadth. Um, and in the end, there are now 
going to be four artists in humbly, with humility, are going to be representing the British Cypriot community. But it does, I want to say it does go much broader than what we're showing. I think we should start with Renos. Renos Lavid is um, he's our senior patriarch, if you like. Um, Renos, born here in Cyprus, grew up in Paphos, um, familiar with the, the coastline, the history, the classical, the classical history of Paphos, but um, pursued his career in the UK and for 30 years was a graphic designer, a graphic artist for the Daily Mail Group. Okay. Um, and, in the, and in the meantime was also doing his own kind of artwork and different themes. And he's really a kind of senior citizen, if, I, if he doesn't mind me saying that, uh, of the art community in Cyprus. And he's done a broad a range of things. And, and what we've done with Renos is trying to pick some representative examples of that broad 30, 40 year career that mm -hmm. he's had in art. So you'll see at the exhibition things which have been inspired by his origin, Paphos, and the sea, and the, and the classical legacy of Paphos. But you'll also see um, examples of his work, and that will be in the form of paintwork, for example, mm -hmm. classical paintwork. Mm -hmm. But you'll also see things that was inspired from his career. Uh, he worked in Fleet Street for, for, for um, the Daily Mail Group. They moved to Canary Wharf, so that was another part. So he became very familiar with those street scenes and those architectural mm -hmm. styles that you see in, those, in, in, in central London. Um, and that's inspired some of his later etchings. Uh, in fact, he, he completed a book at the end of this year, a 96-page book of illustrations, um, etchings, of just London scenes. And the work that's on display uh, at the Zambellas Museum has some examples of that. So we'll see some of his etchings, we'll see some of his paintwork inspired by, by those kind of uh, different periods. I should say that Renos, um, all the artists will be here for the opening on Wednesday, except for Renos. Renos sadly suffered a very serious illness in January and unfortunately can't come. His family has given us permission to carry on and display his work, so mm -hmm. fortunately we can show what he can do. That's Renos. Um, another artist, again a different style, is Despina, Despina Simiu, a British Cypriot um, who studied in, in the UK, uh, done a little bit of photography, uh, and various, as well as um, studying in art. Uh, and more recently has come to look at the print medium, different, you know, the broad variety of print mediums for expressing her art. And she's the kind of person that, if she's got one underlying theme, it's normally something to do with the form of the body. But more than that, she likes to take those kind of visual representations um, and mix them up with various other things that she sees, whether they're scenic, whether they're still life, and put them together in, mm -hmm. some, in some way, in some interesting way. But now expressing that through the medium of print, the, the broad variety of ways of producing like silkscreen prints and, and other prints. And so, so we'll see a range of her print work, um, it, which is often around this theme of the form of the body, uh, but sometimes in an interesting situation or mixed up with other elements. So very different from Renos, as you can see. And then we have Andrea, Andrea Dirimos. Again, a, a, a young artist, studied in, in the UK, studied her art, a fine art in the UK. Um, and in photography, we have the concept of street photographer. I know what that means as a, as a, as a photographer. Um, and I think if there's any, anyone close to being a street artist, mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's Andrea, and you'll see what I mean when, if you come to the exhibition and see her works. She takes a particular, she likes to display modern life, modern life, modern street life, uh, through her very colorful and impactful way of painting and drawing. Um, and you'll see certain scenes which you'll recognize, but you'll see them presented in a very interesting, interesting way and I mean she's 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 such a street artist that one of the things that she's been commissioned to do recently is you know there are those old red telephone boxes in London well of course nobody uses those anymore They're, everyone's on a mobile so in London they're thinking what do we do with those telephone boxes well they've asked some artists including Andrea to paint them mm -hmm. in a way that is attractive and uh, takes into account the environment that we're in so that's the kind of street photographer that she is um, and you can see very different style there as well. 
I will be the fourth uh, exhibitor. And again, I'm now in the photography camp of art. And on, on display, I, mean, I do, it's hard to describe what I do. I don't, I don't do street photography. I don't do travel photography. Uh, I don't do reportage. I do all three in one. So I like to go around the world. I travel a lot. And I, I go around the world and try and capture through my photography images which give a feeling to the viewer of life. Mm -hmm. So not just a record shot of a beautiful place, but more, m more about what it what it's like to live there, what it's like, what kind of impact have the people who live there had on, um, on that environment. And for the exhibition, I've chosen um, some shots from m a recent visits I've made to Burma, Myanmar, uh, where I went to some of the more remote locations, in fact, quite remote locations, to look at the village life and, and the daily life of those communities, which hasn't changed for a thousand years. And uh, also from a trip that I made just across the border from Myanmar in southwest China in Yunnan province. Again, only now being opened up to the tourists. When I went, I was there for a month. My group, they, they were the only Westerners that I saw mm -hmm. for almost all that time. And again, looking at their way of life and how they're impacting uh, the, 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 the surroundings and nature uh, and so on. So, so in the exhibition, I'll have some representations of those two. So you can see it's a broad church a broad spectrum of the community. And, uh, and let me say that in London, there is, it goes much broader and deeper than that. But I just want to give a feel for the breadth of what, what's being done by the British Cypriot community. Great. Um, UK Cyprus Enterprise Council is the uh, sponsor of the exhibition. Uh, can you talk more about this collaboration briefly? Sure. Um, the UK Cyprus Enterprise Council is a voluntary association mm -hmm. that was set up in the wake of, in the aftermath of the 2013 crisis here in Cyprus. And what it is, it's really a network of British Cypriots across all aspects of life, professional, business, academia, art. Um, it, were, it met out a kind of, how do you put it, a, a drive for, for British Cypriots mm -hmm. to respond to what they saw in the aftermath of the 2013 Cyprus, and they thought, well, how can I help? How can I help? And you know, lots of, lots of um, people have helped in their own way, but this was an attempt to bring them together, again, in a more organized fashion, to, to create this network that would help promote Cyprus, support Cyprus um, from, from this British Cypriot community. So that was set up in 2013, at the end of 2013. We have, for example, as our honorary patrons, people like um, um, Stelios Hagiannou, the, uh, the businessman, um, Christopher uh, Pissaridis, obviously the, no, the Nobel laureate, and, and others. They, they are our honorary patrons, and we have a board made up again of people who, have, who, who, who spread across the various social and business life of, 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 of the UK. And we have now nearly 100 ambassadors, we call them, goodwill ambassadors, you know, this, which is really the core of this network of British Cypriots uh, who come together in various formats and forums to promote Cyprus and help Cyprus. So we've done events up to now all in the UK, mm -hmm. and they can be as small as a luncheon okay. that, that's highly focused, to a large seminar where we'll bring others in and bring people from Cyprus to mm -hmm. talk about Cyprus. And um, now the UK Cyprus Enterprise Council up to now has been working in the UK with its network. But what we want to do going forward is also to bring that, that network mm -hmm. to Cyprus by doing events in Cyprus. This is the first event that the UK Cyprus Enterprise Council will be doing uh, here in Cyprus. Uh, it happens to be in the um, area of art, but in the future we'll be doing in uh, other areas. And lastly, um, what impact do you hope your artwork will have in today's society, in general? Uh, I think that's a very, you, you know, one has to give a very personal response. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me talk about my own, mm -hmm. my own response to that. Um, I'm a photographer. What I like to do, as I say, is to give a feeling for a, a particular place, a particular style of life. I happen to have, as I say, half of my life here in Cyprus. I'm a British Cypriot, born in Britain, but my roots 
are in the north of Cyprus, from, from the Famagusta area. My wife is from Morfo. Uh, and for me, you know, what happened on the island is obviously a, a, a tragedy for all of us, but a very personal tragedy because you know, my family and my roots have been uprooted. What I'm trying to do here with some of my work at the moment is to go around and try and capture um, try and capture some, not record, but some, some feeling for what life was like in Cyprus prior to its separation. So, for example, I'm doing a particular project on the churches of Cyprus. Now, I could do, and the monasteries, mm -hmm. take some photographs, not just photographs, but also the life around those churches, etc. I could do that just on our side of the island. But I want to do that on the other side of the island, because I, I don't see that it's an, an, an issue that, that, that we're separated. So I'm going to the north and I'm taking you know, shots of, of, of churches and monasteries there, and eventually I want to present them in an exhibition, hopefully, where people will look at it and say, yeah, that is that's Cyprus as a whole. Okay. And I'll give you another example. Uh, two years ago, I and five other people got on a bicycle in Paphos, and we circled on bike the whole perimeter of the island, up to Rizogarpaso, back down to Famagusta, ending up in Paphos. And on the way, we took photographs. I took photographs. Mm -hmm. They're on my website. Um, uh, and I wanted to tell, I wanted to give people the feeling of our history, of our beauty, you know, Crusader castles, uh, Catholic monasteries, Byzantine churches, Roman ruins, you know, it's, yeah. but across the whole island. So we can start thinking about Cyprus in that mm -hmm. context. So that's what I, I'm personally trying to do, Great. but I'm sure others will have their own Great. particular perspective on that. Thank you so much. No and again, the public will be able to see the exhibition started from April 6th, yes. running through April 30th. Correct. And uh, the location? It's at the um, Zambella's um, uh, gallery, which is in Gaimagli. In Nicosia. Uh, th uh, so um, if you look up under um, Michael and Lugia Zambella's mm -hmm. gallery, you will find it. And it's Thank five minutes so from here, so everybody's welcome to come. Thank you, Robert, for being here. Thank you.